It's been quite a while since I've posted a VS Code update video, one year in fact. So I'm gonna try to do these more frequently from now on. In this video, we're going to look at some highlights from the updates to VS Code that stood out to me over the past year. There were several great improvements. And if you want to learn more about VS Code, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. I also have a VS Code cheat sheet that you can download for free. The link is in the description. It has keyboard shortcuts, my favorite extensions, themes, fonts, and icon packs. And if you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. Sticky scrolling has been a thing for a while, and it's very helpful. It helps you to keep track of what context you're in. So you'll see here uh, that these, this post request gets stuck at the top. And as I keep going down, you'll see that each function or each variable or object gets stuck at the top. So you can see where your current context is. And I think this came to VS Code over a year ago, but now we also have sticky scrolling in tree views. So if we focus on the file explorer, you can see as we scroll that certain folders get stuck to the top, helping us to keep track of the current context. This can come in very handy in large projects. And if you need to quickly share a link directly to a line or a range of lines in your project, which is hosted on GitHub, you can right click in the editor gutter and get a permalink directly to it. So we can copy that permalink. We can copy it as markdown. We can even copy a link to the project's head and also a link to this on vscode.dev. And for this to work on desktop, you do need the GitHub pull requests and issues extension. And you can also access this through the file system under share. And then you have the same options here. You can now move editors out of your main window by dragging and dropping. And I can drag it back in. Alternatively, we can right click on a tab and then either move to a new window or copy to a new window. If I copy this to a new window, and then make some more edits. You can see that these edits happen in real time. And since terminals can also be editors, we can take this terminal and move it up here as an editor. Uh, we can also move these out of the main window. So how cool is that? You can have your terminal in a separate window as well. And thank you to the sponsor of this video, FlexiSpot, who sent me their C7 ergonomic chair to try out. It's been a fantastic addition to my workspace and I'm excited to share my unbiased thoughts with you. First of all, this chair was very easy to unpack and put together. It took me about 15 minutes. Now, as a programmer, we spend a lot of time sitting. So this is one piece of office equipment that I don't skimp on. It's important for me to be comfortable and avoid any back problems in the future. Now, if you're young, you probably aren't thinking about that right now, but you will. One of the standout features of the FlexiSpot C7 is the seat cushion and suspension. I'm not sure what really to call it but it's very well built and it has no issue with me plopping down on it. The seat also has a forward tilting feature, which is great for when you need to lean in and focus on your work, keeping you comfortable in a variety of sitting positions. And the C7 is designed for maximum adjustability. You can easily modify the seat height, depth, tilt. The armrest is fully adjustable in three dimensions and the headrest can be adjusted to support your neck. Now the one they sent me also has a built-in footrest. And I really like the lumbar support. When you sit down, the chair adapts to you as you move. And with a 10 year warranty, I really don't think you could go wrong with this chair. Plus it looks good. So if you're in the market for a new office chair, the FlexiSpot C7 is a top contender. Check out the link in the description to learn more and upgrade your workspace comfort today. The addition of profiles within VS Code has been really awesome, especially if you are someone who works with multiple languages or in multiple different contexts. Profiles allow you to save extensions, settings, keyboard shortcuts, UI states, tasks, and user snippets. So you can make a profile customized for web development, data science with Python, Java, or whatever makes sense for you. Create a new profile, go over to the manage cog, and then go to profile, and then new profile. You can name the profile, select an icon, the default is the cog like we have here, the manage cog. And then choose what to configure in your profile. You have to select at least one. If we unselect any of these, then it would be considered a partial profile. So if we didn't want this profile to um, alter any of the keyboard shortcuts, then it would import the keyboard shortcuts from the default profile. And we can also choose to copy our profile from an existing profile that we have at the bottom or from some profile templates. 
Python, Angular, Docs, Writer, Data Science, Java General, Java Spring, Node.js. And these come with some defaults out of the box, some extensions, some snippets, keyboard shortcuts, etc., that are customized to these specific use cases. So I can switch to another profile by clicking on the Manage Cog and then going to that profile. And I can easily tell which profile I'm in by looking at the icon at the bottom right. And we can also switch profiles in the Command Palette and I can switch back. And settings profiles can also be synced across your VS Code instances. Now there is an experimental new UI for managing your profiles. If we go into our settings and then we search for profiles and we can enable the new profiles UI. And now our menu will be a little bit different. When we go here, we can go to profile and then profiles. And this is the UI for that. Now we can easily uh, see the different profiles and see what's included in these different profiles. And you can now share profiles by either exporting it as a local file or as a GitHub gist. VS Code will create a secret gist for you on your GitHub account, and then you can use that link to share it with others. So because I have this new UI enabled, uh, if I go here to the three dots and then export, it gives me the option to export as a GitHub gist or a local file. So I'll choose GitHub, and then we can copy the link or open the link. Let's go ahead and open it. Because the gist is secret, it can't actually be pulled in. So we have to go over to GitHub and make that a public gist. And then after we refresh, we should see the profile here in preview in our web browser on vscode.dev. If you want to use my custom profile, it's on GitHub. There's a link in the description. A small change, there is an update to the built-in themes. So the default is now dark modern. Before that, it was dark plus. Um, of course, if you like light themes, um, just prepare your eyes quickly. The default now is light modern before it was light default. Mm, yeah, I like if I had to choose between the two, I think I like light modern better than light plus. Sure, but no, we're going to stick to my code stacker theme. If you don't already know, I have a theme that you can install for free. VS Code now has a new paste as feature. So if I'm writing a markdown file and I want to bring an image in, uh, normally I'd have to, you know, do the whole markdown syntax to create that image within here. Uh, but if I have an image, let me just drag it over here and I have to hold down shift and it will just automatically put the image in there for me. Uh, and then we have this little context here that we can click. We can insert as markdown image, insert as a relative path or insert as the absolute path which would be the insert path. Uh, but you know, by the default is great. And if I didn't already have this image in my folder structure here, uh, I could go ahead and just drag it in from the outside and again, hold shift down. And there we go. There's that awesome image again. This even works when copying and pasting images. For instance, if I took a quick screenshot here of this readme and then just press command V, then it automatically pastes this and look at this image came from my clipboard and is now saved in this directory. And if I click on this, there is the image, uh, the screenshot that I just took. So VS Code now has a standalone color picker uh, that can be used to replace or insert colors. Uh, if for some reason we wanted to, in this paragraph tag, add a color, uh, I could go to the command palette and search for uh, show or focus standalone color picker. And then we can pick a color. Let's uh, pick a color here. And then if we want the RGB, that's fine. Or if we click this, it goes to HSL or to the hex code. So let's go ahead and do that and insert. And it inserts that color here for us. Cool. Emmet now supports a new set of abbreviations for JSX and TSX files. So if you're unfamiliar with Emmet, you could do something like uh, dot my style and it will create a div there and with the class name of my styles. Okay, so that's standard image. But if you're using CSS modules, you can do dot dot my styles and it will add a custom attribute name and value prefix, which can be configured. We go into our VS Code settings in this project. We could add emit syntax profiles, JSX. And then we can say markup attribute. We're gonna want that to be class name. And then the value prefix should be whatever you would like it to be, but my styles. 
we'll just leave it there we'll save this and then back in this page if we do that same thing dot dot my style and we can now see it uh, adds it as a class name and it's angry at us because we're not importing my styles and then my style but that's fine this could come in handy if you like to use css modules Did you know that if you have uh, some JSON here, you can sort your JSON data alphabetically? Um, just go to Command Palette and type in JSON sort document. And there, it's sorted. Pretty cool. Sticky scrolling has also landed in the terminal. So if you go to your settings and search for terminal sticky, uh, turn this on, it's, it's disabled by default. And then if we open up the terminal, and we run some sort of a long command and we will see the last command stuck here at the top. Pretty nice to be able to see what our last command was. So more of a quality of life improvement there. There's a new Chrome extension called VS Code, which makes it easier for us to open GitHub repositories in VS Code.dev. So after you add this to Chrome, I can open up a new tab and type code, and then we can now search for a repo within GitHub. And if I want to open up my GitHub readme, I could say code stacker slash code stacker. Here's my GitHub profile readme in VS code.dev. GitHub Copilot has been upgraded. Along with inline suggestions, there's also a chat view, which you see here, along with inline chat. So if we take a look at the slash commands, uh, not only do we have slash commands, but we also have chat agents. So we have agents that help us to uh, ask questions to our terminal, to VS Code. So if you have questions about how to use VS Code, you can chat with the VS Code itself or with your workspace. You can use the workspace agent to chat with all of the files within your current workspace. And then we have slash commands to explain what's in the terminal, to explain what's in our workspace to fix things in our workspace, to create new workspaces, new notebooks, create tests, search through VS Code, run commands, and if all else fails, use slash help to figure out what you're looking for. So I can type slash new, and then you see it's looking at workspace and then new, and then I can tell it exactly what kind of new project I'd like to create. So I'm just gonna say Vite React App. And here is the directory structure that it's suggesting. So it looks pretty cool. Let's create this workspace. We'll select the folder and open it up. Nice. You can even use Copilot to help you generate commit messages. So instead of typing a random commit message here, let's just use Copilot and it will say, yeah, sure. Update environment variables and add vector search template. Sure, sounds good to me. And Copilot has been updated to GPT 4.0 instead of 4 Turbo. So these were some things that stood out for me. There were a lot of other minor improvements that you can read in the official release notes linked in the video description. VS Code is constantly improving. Let me know what your favorite feature is. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.